up everybody we are live again this is kyle with wmma fighters and i have ufc cut woman swayze valentine on with me how you doing i'm doing great how are you doing tonight good thank you so much for being on here oh gosh my pleasure thanks for having me oh yeah i've been looking forward to this for a while so um so i got i gotta ask if you wouldn't care to kind of talk about how does someone get into this um, you know, it's really, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty difficult. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, especially being, um, I guess a woman, which, which is currently my experience in getting into being a cut man, um, it was really difficult for me. You know, there was a lot of people didn't take me seriously. Um, sometimes they still don't. Um, it's, it had been a struggle from the beginning and it continues to actually kind of be a struggle. You know, you, you have to fight for your spot um, all the time. You know, w once you make it, you don't you don't stay there if you don't work hard. You know, and so it's really hard. Um, it's something to do. You really have to have a passion for it for sure. I know when I got started, I loved the sport in general, and I'm like, man, you know, I really want to be a part of this somehow. And um, so I went to, you know, a, a few people heard the story. I went to my local MMA fight, and um, I talked to the promoter and see what I could, how I could be a part of his show. And he told me, you know, well, you could be a ring girl. And so I, I thought about it and like, okay, well, I'll do it. I'll get my foot in the door. And um, you know, I saw the coaches wrapping the fight hands and and loving the sport as much as I do there's no greater honor than wrapping the hands of the fighter and I'm like that's what I want to do and how I started was I just went to any local MMA Muay Thai or boxing gym that was near me and I just walked in there and I'm like hey you know I want to wrap some fighters hands what can I do they're like you know well we have sparring sessions and you know you can wrap the fighters hands for their sparring sessions so you know that's what I did you know you got to get yourself in the gym even now um, being a professional cut woman, I still have to get in the gym and, and stay in the gym and, you know, because you still have to keep up on your craft, you know, for the times mm -hmm. that you're not working. And so really the most important thing is just to get into your local gyms and just build a relationship with all the fighters in their camps so they can learn to trust you. And, you know, and with a lot of them, they just end up taking you kind of along the way as well as they grow, you grow. So it's just really important to get into your local gym and, and get to know your, you know, your local fighters and camps. That's so cool. I mean, you know, that that's, it's one of those things, right, that you, you don't even really think about. You know, you see this person who, you know, you're talking about your rapid fighter's hands. People don't really understand what goes into that, you know, that that's such a huge thing. Um, and then you see these people who go out in between rounds and they have Q-tips and all these things and you don't really think, you know, well, what that what it took to get there right and if there's even like a person a specific person that does that you know I mean I had no idea I started off just wrapping hands I had no idea there was a cut man mm -hmm. you know that like actually tended to the fighters in the cage I didn't know any part of that life first you know so wrapping hands was really my first my first love and my first passion and it's truly an art you know to be able to do it correctly and because I, I know when I started, man, like, these poor fighters, like, their fingers were turning purple. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. But, you know, I mean, as it comes with practice, of course, you know, you get better and you learn. And um, But, yeah, I mean, then you learn that there's a whole other side. You're like, shoot, man, there's people that actually get to be in the cage and take care of them, like, and get them to the next round. Like, that's dope. I mean, that was so cool. And so then, you know, you just start working on that side, you know, and then you get to, a you know, um, a promotion and, uh, it's just, it's so cool. It's such a cool, you know, aspect of fighting that a lot of people don't don't realize. Usually we're the people in, in black in the back that nobody sees or nobody knows who we are. And we're just such an integral part to MMA, Muay Thai, and boxing. Like, it's just so cool now to, like, actually know who those people are, you know, and, right. and get to see what they do. Yeah. That, that, that's just, that's just all. To me, I mean, it's just, it's just really cool. Now... How does it, I don't know what the word would be, would it be scheduling or, you know, like, do you stick with the UFC or do you do other promotions, I guess, as a way to start? Yeah, so um, we can totally do other promotions as well. Okay. You know, UFC is obviously our, our main, they take priority, but in times that we're not doing a show because we all kind of take turns, um, when we're not doing a show, we do have permission to go you know, work other organizations, um, which I do as well. We all do. 
you know, to keep up on the crowd for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so you uh, so he says kind of like a, a rotation thing. So is there like a, a number of events that that you schedule a year, or is it kind of like I mean, do you know how far in advance do you know usually? We usually know a good about three months before a fight. We usually kind of get our schedule. Okay. So we get a decent amount of time to know what we're doing in the next couple of months. Oh, okay. So that, that's cool. I mean, I didn't really think, I mean, I almost was picturing like maybe two weeks out <laughs> or something like that. Oh, hey, gosh, no way, man. Hey, we get we, months notice. <laughs> okay, cool. Because it's like, hey, you know, we, we need you to fix some cuts. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So like you said, hey, next week, can you come in next week? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're good, right? You can stop what you're doing and come to Vegas. Um, exactly. So with that said, you know, like you say, you started wrapping hands. So do, do you have to have some sort of medical background for this? So you don't. I mean, of course, if you do, I can imagine you know, that would just be such a huge advantage because you can kind of, you know, know a lot more, especially um, – when it comes to the cut side of things, but um, unfortunately, no, you don't need an extra, you know, background of medical field, things like that. Um, you know, you do need to be licensed in each state and country that you um, practice in. Um, for example, it's called a seconds license, number two ND license. Um, and it's the same license, actually, that coroners, you know, obtain to be in a fight. It basically gives you permission to be backstage and in the cage with the fighter. So um, it's kind of scary that you don't need any extra training because we, us cut men and cut women, we deal with epinephrine, and that's a pretty serious drug. And um, for someone, yes, we do need you know a doctor's prescription to be able to obtain and a license to use it. Anyone can get the license. You know, so it's a little, a little hairy, I think, that you that it's not a little more strict on who can obtain, you know. Um, you know, drugs like that, they are pretty serious. So, but no, to answer your question, sorry, that was long drawn out, but no, um, you don't need a, you don't need a medical background. Um, but I think it should be a little harder to, to get those sorts of drugs, to be honest. Yeah, that's interesting. See, I thought you would need, um, some sort of medical background, really. I mean, that's, that's fascinating, but kind of like you said before, right, you go to these gyms, you, you work and you practice and you get better at it and you gain trust. So that, that that's probably a huge part of it. Yeah, it's super huge. And especially if someone does, you know, if anyone new coming into the game, they're, you know, they're going to be like, who is this person? What are they doing? Are they good? Like, can I trust them? Because a lot of the, you know, the coaches with the fighters are super protective, you know, understandably so. You know, mm -hmm. this is like their project fighter, you know, and it's their friend or their family, and that's like their, their very special project, their very special person. And to have someone come in from the outside be like, hey, you know, you never met me before, but I want to wrap his hands, you know, and they're mm -hmm. like, well, wait a minute, you know, I don't know what you can do. Like, can you wrap them? Can you not? I mean, I, I still get that even in the UFC, which all of us cut men, you know, there's certain people that don't want certain people to wrap hands and things like that, and it happens. Um, but that's why it's so important to be around these fighters so often and develop that relationship, trust. I mean, that's like one of the hardest things to obtain is the trust for real. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. man, it's tough, you know. I mean, it's so traditional in, in martial arts and boxing, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, it's superstition and there's just a bunch of stuff you got to break through, you know, to be able to do it. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's great. And once you gain their trust, I mean, it's so rewarding. It's just the best job ever. <laughs> I, I love hearing you talk about it because now I'm still here. I'm like, it is the best job ever. <laughs> Dude, it's so cool. It is so cool. I get to see the world. I mean, it's just, oh, man, it's awesome. So what are some of the, of your favorite places that you've been to? Oh man. So out of the country, my probably number one is Australia. I, for the, my lifetime, always want to go to Australia, and I've, I've lucky I've been there three times now. Um, and then, you know, I really, I really enjoy Brazil. I go, I'm headed to Brazil February 2nd um, to work the fight card there, mm -hmm. and I, it's again, it's my third time in Brazil, so Brazil's pretty special to me as well. Um, I'd say Australia and Brazil if I had to go international. Um, it's those are just really cool places, and and the fighters, especially in Brazil, I mean, they're just so, they're so passionate about the sport in general. Like you just land in Brazil and you feel it. You know what I mean? Like it's right. like, it's I just I love it. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Brazil is is um, such an awesome country for MMA and really combat sports in general, but MMA for sure. I mean, they have some they have some legends there. Dude, the loudest fights that you'll ever go to are the ones in Brazil. I mean, they are just freaking passionate. And, I mean, that's where it's at. And it's just those are going to be the loudest shows ever, the ones in Brazil. So they're so much fun because they get you pumped. It's so much adrenaline. It's mm-hmm. just like freaking going to a badass concert, you know. It's, like, it's just the coolest. It's one of the coolest places to do events. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, love, I love the Brazilian cards, you know, a lot of that for that reason. Um, I think they are very um, educated fans. Like they know what they're watching. Oh yeah, man, they're all passionate about it. It's just so cool to be in there and like and just feel their vibe. It's just it's just awesome. <laughs> um, so you know, kind of like um, I mean, this just sounds incredible, and and it's a really unique take. So doing this, um, how do you feel the sport? has evolved you know with the female fighters and how do you think the fan reception has evolved gosh i mean who doesn't like watching a you know a woman's fight i mean like it's just it's badass i think it's so great that dana you know finally allowed women in the ufc and you know it's just they've just blossomed and just bloomed and and almost completely took over you know they look you know the fans look forward to the women's fights you know, so much more, you know, now, it's, it's just so cool. I mean, I love seeing women in MMA. I love seeing women all around being able to do what they love to do, regardless of what it used to be. And it's just, it has evolved so much. And I just, I think it was such a great investment of Dana to do that. And it's, it's paying off tenfold for sure. Yeah, you know, I agree 100% there. Um, so, you know, I like asking fighters that and because um, it's a really cool perspective from them. And, you know, I think it's a really cool perspective from you. You know, you've seen a l- ton of fights. <laughs> you know, you've been <laughs> live to countless events. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's a really cool take. So you said Brazil and Australia. I mean, what are some of the being there? What, what are some of the... Um, most intense, I guess, in a, in a good way, not like a bad way. What are some of the most intense fights you've witnessed? Some of the most intense fights? Yeah. Gosh. Um, actually, I see the most, one of the most intense fights either of those was about actually the city of Mexico. It was with Jessica and Leslie Smith and your blows Jessica to the dancing. I mean, that was like insane. You know, that's the. We need to be an ear off in the cage and stuff. So that would like, be like one of the most intense things uh, that I've ever seen. I mean, so many things that I mean, ah, you know, great ones just happened. Like, that was pretty shock. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it was like totally unexpected. And you know, pretty good. Well, you know what's going to happen. You know what to do. Oh, I'm losing you. Oh, can you read now? You're still breaking up a little bit. I'll start going. Okay. Let's see. Over here. Hello? Hey. Can you hear me? Uh, try it again. Maybe. Hello? Can you hear me? You're still dropping a little bit. Oh, I don't see. Let me go. Oh, I'm not talking. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love technology, right? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> uh, so I caught the the beginning of that. Um, so if you wouldn't care to kind of. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So no, totally fine. Um, so one of the most intense fights I actually witnessed was not in either of the places of Australia or Brazil. It was actually Mexico City, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And it was when Jessica, I totally took out Leslie Smith's ear. I mean, it's not often you see half the ear hanging off in the cage. And uh, I actually worked Leslie Smith's corner and I took care of her ear and that was pretty intense. But I mean, even just, gosh, the the most recent one with Conor McGregor, I mean, totally unexpected. That was insane. You know, you never know 
what's going to happen at fights. There was one I went to actually in New Jersey where, you know, one of the cornermen just totally went berserk and picks up the, you know, the fighter stools and just smashes them on the ground and just, you know, wood goes flying everywhere. It hit me in the leg, hits someone else in the face. And, I mean, then it's just, I mean, it, they're just so unpredictable. And that's what makes them so exciting because you don't know what's going to happen. It's just all so intense. And it's just, it's just awesome. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I I mean that that's the thing, you know. If you've never been to one of these events live, I mean the whole thing is intense. Um but yeah. So that so you talking about Leslie Smith, so that that was that's a question that of course I have to ask this question. Um wh- what are some of the like the gnarliest things you've seen uh between rounds when you hop in there ready to tend to a fighter? Um Gosh, man, I have to say Leslie Smith's ear tops it. Yeah. Um, her ear was pretty gnarly. Um, there's been some fighters, not meaning just UFC, but outside UFC, where they've actually defecated in what in the cage, which has mm-hmm. taken them liver shots. Um, yeah. uh, gosh, there's... Man, I mean, and then freaking... Which, well, I wasn't part of this one, but when, you know, Silva's leg snapped in half, I mean, just... Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Just a ton of crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of those questions that you would need an entire day to probably answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean the list goes on. Yeah, right. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome though. I mean, and and that's the again that that's another one of those things that, uh, you know, if, if you don't really get the sport, it's hard to visualize some of those things actually happening. You know. Yeah, exactly. So so I would say, you know, having a strong stomach is probably a requirement here. It is definitely a requirement, for sure. And you know what? It's funny. People are like, man, doesn't the blood bother you? And to be honest, it, you know, it doesn't. I mean, there has been, I take it back, there has been a time or two where you just see an astronomical amount of blood on the body that you're just not used to seeing that much volume in places there shouldn't be blood. Mm-hmm. And it's turned my stomach a good two occasions. And But to be honest, what grosses me out more than anything is, is boogers. I can't. If a fighter has a booger hanging out, I got to, like, wipe his nose. And the whole time my rag is in my hand, I am gagging until I get to my chair and I throw that bitch right under it. And I'm like, oh, I just I can't do it. I can't do oh boogers and snot. That that gets me every time. <laughs> yep, that's my secret. All right. <laughs> wow. That that's a miracle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's where it's at. Wow. Yeah. Well, I did not expect that at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Wow. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> that's fine. Now. <laughs> So I guess um, so. At some point, you know, y- you get known. I mean, you've probably built quite a few relationships, you know, over the time you've done this. I mean, um, and y- you've hit on this, but I mean, it, it, how can you really stress the importance of of like how how important that truly is? Oh my gosh, it's everything. I mean, if you're not if you're not gaining the trust of the people you're working with, you're not going to get work, period. It's just it's not going to happen. And um, that's happened to me a few times. You know, it's like the there's been, you know, windows of time that I've been out of the game due to personal reasons or whatever it may be. And, you know, if you're not seen, you're forgotten. And it takes time to build a new trust again and, and find new people to want to work with you and, it's just, it's tough. I mean, you, I can't stress enough that you got to stay relevant every single day to get work, you know, and that's, that's in the entertainment industry anywhere you're at. And, um, so it's just super important to just stay relevant, stay in those gyms, keep your relationships with all the fighters that you have and keep them strong and tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that makes perfect sense. And And I hate to keep kind of harping on it, but it's, it's it's incredibly i mean it's such a huge factor of you know how it all comes together so um just kind of want to address that a little bit 
Yeah, I mean, it's one thing having the skill of being able to wrap hands, you know, or be able to take care of a cut between rounds, but if you have no one wanting to use you, you, you have nothing, you know? So it's like, yeah, because there's always new fighters coming in that don't know you, you know, and things like that, and it's like you got to jump right on them and just get them to trust you and, and just do your best and show them that you're there for them and, yeah, just, just friggin' make them your friends, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's the best that you can do, you know, with anyone to gain trust, you got to be close to them, and that's super important. Yeah, definitely. And you know, this is this is really cool insight. I mean, this this is this is different. You know, I, I've never yeah. had this opportunity before. Um, so, when you um, when you got into this, I mean, were you always a fan of this sport or combat sports in general? You know, I'd have to say the first sport that I really liked was hockey. This was before I really knew what was MMA, and the only reason I liked hockey was because I liked, I looked forward to watching to see if there was a fight. And so I was like, that's the only reason I wanted to watch hockey. I didn't even care about the game. I wanted to watch the fight. And, you know, because it's like, man, that's just so crazy. I want to go to my first hockey game, and I hope that there's going to be a fight. And, you know, and then uh, when I started noticing MMA, I'm like, dude, this is like my jam. I mean, shoot, you just, there's a whole show of people fighting? Like, and then I get to take care of them, you know, before, during, and after? I mean, I'm like, this is it, man. This is what I'm supposed to do. And so, yeah, I, I actually liked liked hockey first and then MMA. And, and then, of course, out of that, I mean, I you can't not love boxing and Muay Thai outside of that. So um, that's what I love about MMA so much is you get to see all of these arts in one place. You know, they get to use it whenever they want. And that's just what's so cool about MMA is it's not just boxing where it's just striking and, you know, and just, just standing up or Muay Thai where it's just kicking. You know, you can grapple. You can do wrestling. You can do jiu-jitsu. I mean, it's just... I could go on and on, sorry. It's just the coolest sport no, ever. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, that's what I love about these interviews because, you know, I, I love hearing about, you know, what, what you do, obviously, um, and any and all insight for whatever reason. You know, it could be um, educational purpose, could be just to get... You know, could be totally selfish on my part, just wanting to know an answer. You know, <laughs> and that's okay too. Yeah, so yeah. Don't no. I mean, you you go on a roll. You go. You just let it roll. <laughs> Thanks. You know, but yeah, I, I um I think I think this is really fascinating. Um, and it's one of those things that, you know, like you said, it, it's it, it's almost like you're you can't ever kind of just chill. You know, you're always no. Um. I don't know what's the word. It's like you're always auditioning, even when you're in the show. Exactly. You have to work twice as harder when you make it to the top. Like, it's it's a freaking. If I if I thought that I had it hard before, man, getting to the UFC, which is like the pinnacle, it's like the Olympics of MMA. Mm -hmm. It's like getting up there, man. You got to work ten times as hard to stay. And honestly, for me personally, I got to work twenty times harder because I'm the only woman that does it, and I can only fight my own battles. And it's it's. It's tough, man. It's sometimes there's times I want to quit. I don't care that it's you know UFC. It's like it's tough, man. There's I have sometimes it feels like I got the world against me, and it's it's freaking tough. It really is, and I just keep on going because it's what I love, and you know I'm just I'm not gonna let anyone stop me or let anyone you know get me down. And one thing that Ronda Rousey said to me that before I got to the UFC, which was just huge, and, it, and I carry it with me all the time, even in, like, my personal life, she goes, you know, I was like, do you have any advice for me whatsoever? And she's like, you know, um, don't ever let anyone make you feel like you don't deserve to be there. And that was so powerful that even on my hardest days, you know, in UFC or, or even in a local show or even in home life, I will never let anyone make me feel like I don't deserve to be there, period. You know, so that's that's something that's been really special. Yeah, that, that keeps huge. me going. That's huge. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, you're you're right, and it, it's very cool, very unique um, what you're doing, and like you say, you are the only woman there, so that, that's huge. Um, you know, so it's really cool though. Now, this is a totally cliche question, <laughs> but go, if, go for it. If you weren't doing this, what would you see yourself doing? You know, I love helping people. Um, I always had a passion. I wanted to actually be 911 dispatcher, and I trained for it and, and tested for it 
a few times, and that was another passion of mine, you know, being on the other end of the line, being able to talk someone through the hardest times of their life. Um, I uh, always wanted to be a 911 dispatcher. You know, my, my dad and brother, my brother currently is a paramedic. You know, I grew up in the medical field of, you know, my dad and brother being firefighters and EMTs and, um, and yeah, so I always had the radio around me and, and you know, hearing the calls, and that's always been a passion too. So I'd have to say, you know, 911 dispatcher or, of course, you and nurse, any way that I can take care of people. And that's why I love being a mother so much. You know, I get to take care of my children all the time, and it's just, yeah, so... 911 dispatcher or, or a nurse would be my top two. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So what I love about what I love most about this conversation is your passion. Um, you know, you can oh, thanks. you can literally feel it from through the computer, <laughs> um, and I think I think that's awesome. So how, how would you define either that in in a sense of you know having a passion for what you do for a living? and doing what you love for a living you know because it it's so easy to say do what you love um you know but how how do you get to that point or how, how did you get to that point you know what i just i just followed my gut to be honest um like i said there's there's many times i wanted to quit there's still times that times get hard and you're thinking man maybe i shouldn't do this anymore or you know and to be honest, I don't have a reason what kept me going through the hard times to continue. Um, I just knew in my gut, knew in my heart, this is what I truly love to do. It's what made me happy when I was there. Um, and I just worked hard and, like they say, you know, find what you love and find a way to make money to do it, you know, to do what you love. And mm -hmm. I feel that regardless of whether I go further or I stay where I am, you know, I'm I'm successfully the way. And um, you just have to. Do what you love to do, man. It's it's so hard to put into words, to be yeah. honest. It's you literally gotta follow your gut. You know, yes. find it in your heart and then freaking let your gut take you there because it's always right. Yeah, I think that was that. I mean, that 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 was kind of a tough question, um, you know. And it, if I put you on the spot, I'm sorry, but no, you're it, fine. It's one of those things that you're right. You can't really put it into words, and going with your gut is probably the most important thing you can do in life. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and you know what, there's something really special that I found out um, just a couple of years ago, and which means, you know, I was doing this for 10 years, 12 years before I even found this out, um, but I never met my grandparents um, from my mom's side, but before I was, you know, after I was born. They all passed away before I was born. And um, I just recently found out a couple of years ago that my grandfather actually fought in Golden Gloves several times. And I never even met him. And so I honestly, I feel, I don't know how religious some people are or, you know, what their beliefs are, but I feel that he guided me as well. You know, I just found, you know, I, I had a passion for this before and then just very recently found out that, you know, he was a boxer fighting in the Golden Gloves. And I'm like, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to do. So I also kind of contribute a little bit to that as well. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty special. Um, so you compete? Is that what you're saying? Or... No, so I don't compete, but my grandfather did. Um, and he, he, yeah, he passed away well before I was born. And I just recently found out a couple of years ago that he, you know, fought boxing and you know at the Golden Gloves several times. And I'm like, dang, didn't know my grandfather was a boxer. Like, I had no idea. So that's why I'm like, ah, it's him too. It's him pushing me, telling me, don't give up, keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I mean, that that is that is really cool, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just one of those things, like you know, you went with your gut, right? And mm -hmm. you find that out. I mean, how cool was that? Yeah, man, it was it was pretty special. So, yeah, I feel like I kind of been a little bit guided. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but this this has been awesome. I mean, it's a very interesting and unique, I think, perspective, and what you do is just such a cool, um, unique, and specialized thing that, I mean, th th this was awesome. You know, I, I, learned, I learned a lot, and I, I really appreciate you for coming on here.
Oh, gosh, I appreciate you and your interest. You know, I mean, the whole sport is special, and we all have, you know, an integral part in, in the sport to make it happen. And, and I thank you for interviewing all, you know, aspects of the sport. You know, you do the fighters, and, you know, you get to see their side, and, and it's neat that you're doing a little, you know, the cut men and the cut women because, you know, we have our really cool part. You know, even the interviewers are, you know, they have their cool part. So thank you for um, having interest in in everyone in the industry. It's pretty cool to kind of see everyone's side of it and, and how how it all works. So thank you for what you do as well. Oh, no problem. And I, I truly appreciate that. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, I'd love to uh, touch base and stay in touch. And, um, you know, just kind of see where, where the where the path has taken you. If you yeah, if you that like sounds great. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, thank you again so much. I appreciate it. And uh, hope you have a good evening. And, um, yeah, just be looking for you out there. Awesome. My pleasure. You have a great night. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right. That was Swayze Valentine. Pretty awesome interview. Unique for sure. Um, a lot of really cool perspective. That is a job that you don't even really think about. And then you get the opportunity to talk about somebody who, do, who does it or to talk with someone. And you see that there's a lot that goes into that. And it's very enlightening. And, yeah, we got, we're going to keep this train rolling. Got several interviews this week. Uh, quite a few things going on. So stay tuned. We have a lot more coming up. And this will be a busy week, but I'm ready for it. And uh, we'll keep the interviews coming. That said, have a good night and have a good Monday tomorrow. If you got a lot of snow, be safe, be careful. If not, do the same. Be safe, be careful. Thanks for listening and have a good night.